All right, we're live, not live, but we are recording now. Um, I'm Austin Light with American Demon Comics, and I'm joined by my friend Brandon Ingram with Disney Comics. So, how's how's your week been, Brandon? It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Before I get into any of my stuff, uh, viewer, you probably see that Austin's horns are. are big and mighty right now <laughs> it's because of the 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 power that has imbued in him through they're King like Garden. the doug Demadone hat they just keep going up <laughs> you can't see yeah. <laughs> yes through kickstarter his powers are more more uh powerful and mighty yes i want to give a huge thank you to everybody that supported me um the kickstarter did fund and i think lat this time two weeks ago it was about 50 percent. it stayed at like 40 to 50 percent for a long time um and it didn't look like it was gonna gonna go all the way through but um we had excuse me a wonderful friend from a few con conventions ago friend and a fan uh back the whole rest of the kickstarter she got the original art and then some so uh, a huge shout out and thank you to Mel uh, for getting us here. And I'm excited to get these books printed and see how they turn out and get them out to you. I'm not excited to deal with Comics Wellspring. I have a very tight deadline yeah. right now by <laughs> September, and <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be on their ass about that. <laughs> um, but. Uh, we with this funded Kickstarter that leads us into many more topics of the for the show. So we'll be getting into that soon. Um, but do you have anything that you that's on your mind, Brandon? Anything uh, updates uh, in your area in your your writing your comics? Updates regarding some of my comics. I got a a couple. I'm still working on uh, a couple comics. I can't say too much about right now. Um, the one comic, this isn't those two. There's so many comics I can't say a lot about right now, but those two that I'm making myself, I can't really say much about the comic that I'm working with, uh, a few artists on where we all are kind of, kind of equally a part of, um, that's still going pretty good. Like my part of that is done. This is the art part now. Uh, so I'm just waiting to, to see the art. Some are nearly done with their art. The big update stuff, uh, Gallows Man, there's some Gallows Man news, like um, <clears throat> Rick Alves, who did the variant covers for issue one and two, um, literally today, like I've already <laughs> talked on this stuff, literally today I'll be sending him a work for hire contract to do uh, the issue three and issue four variant covers. Um, so going to get those variant covers, even though issue four might not come out for like another year or so, uh, I want to go ahead and get those, those covers. Cause I already have all the main covers. I got issue three and four of the main covers. Um, so going to hire Rick to do that. So looking forward to seeing those, um, in Gallows Man three, like I've talked about before, Kickstarter should be September 10th at the latest late september so september time i'm mm -hmm. shooting for september 10th <clears throat> if there's like some hiccups here or there i might bump it back a week or two um but that's going along good and then like the most recent thing i think last friday i was uh emailed by someone that uh basically i was hired to do to write like a short for their anthology. Like I can't say too much about the anthology, but it, it deals with a bunch of stuff and they wanted, they'd seen some of the work I'd done before and they wanted some comedy within it. They saw I could do short comedy pretty well. Um, and so they hired me to do a four page little short within their anthology. Um, I want to say the process first, Thank you to them. Like what I'm about to say has nothing to do with them. This is more of me personally. 
it usually doesn't take me this long to write a short, especially mm-hmm. a four page short. Cause it was Friday night when I got the offer slash accepted. So basically at least half of Saturday, Sunday, Monday, those three days I had an idea and I was writing it and stuff, but it just wasn't working out. This one story that I was writing, it just wasn't working out. And I had to come to grips eventually. I've done this with stories before, but this is the first time where I've been hired and I've had to do this. I had to come to grips where it's like this thing that I've been working on the past two or three days, I got to chuck it in the bin Mm -hmm. because it's just not working out. Basically threw that story out. I mean, it was halfway, if not three fourths of the way done, but it was just, just wasn't working. Right. Threw that away. Middle of Monday, I, I start writing a new story and middle of Monday to middle of Tuesday, finished it as well as like what the, the, (laughs) the slightly bad thing about it is I finished it. It was six pages instead of four Mm. pages Mm -hmm. and i was like let me message him real quick just to (laughs) see if this is okay i'm not going to ask for extra like this is on me in terms of it being six pages instead of four the the price that we had settled on i'm going to stick with um so i was like hey like what if it was six pages instead of four and i basically said it's not going to cost any extra that sort of thing um, he was like, yeah, like that, that sounds fine. If, if it, mm-hmm. if it services the story better than go for it. I was like, okay, great. Here's the file. <laughs> the story was already done. <laughs> I was like, let me just please get us for, <laughs> um, so yeah, sent that over, He's like, he Whoa. looked over it, yeah. <laughs> sent that over. He looked over it last night. He, he, he basically said he laughed out loud through the whole thing. He really dug it. There's minor edits that, uh, that he'll send to me, but, uh, but overall, yeah, it, it, it went good. Um, I, I got to commend you. I got to say that's smart. I got to say when things aren't working out, even if it's four days, five days of work, even if it's a month's work worth of work yep. and you just don't feel that this is going to be a nice juicy steak, get rid of it and, and start, yep. start again. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Because that's that's why I finally came to grips with on Monday, because I was just in denial. Like like around Sunday, I was thinking of that of like, I don't know if this this is gonna work. I just need to pivot, do a different story sort of thing. I was like, no, 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 I can make it work. But (laughs) and do you feel like this came out better? Oh, a hundred percent. That that's something I included in my email because. I'm assuming he probably thought I was going to get this story to him in like two weeks or something. Mm -hmm. When it comes to shorts, like a four page, a six page, even like an eight page short, like for me, my usual turnaround when I'm writing that sort of stuff is like, oh, I can can write that in a day. Like that's like nothing to me. Shorts, I mean, I can write 22 page comic sort of stuff in three, three day span, four day span sort of thing. But shorts for me it it comes quick Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's a one or two sitting like one or two times sitting and that's not that's not me bragging that's just what i've noticed over the time and i mentioned that because it it that's what helped drive some of that frustration at the beginning for me personally when i was writing it because i was like i'm three days into this into a four page story. This never happens to me. What is going on? And it was because of how the story was, but yeah, once Mm -hmm. I pivoted, started the brand new story. Um, yeah, that was, that was so much easier, so much better. And I included in the email, like, Hey, like, I know you, you were likely expecting this in like two weeks. Just wanted to say me personally, I'd like to do this sort of stuff. And like, 24, 48 hour span. That's usually what I'm good with. I had a first story, basically had to chuck it in the bin because it just wasn't working. I have this new story. Um, This new one, I think is, even if the first one worked, Mm -hmm. I think this new one is better. 
right like even if that first one worked this one's better i think it's more more funny um and so yeah overall it, it was i mean it's good it's, it's a, a a paying gig but also the good part of it was the learning experience for me like mm -hmm. we're just constantly learning like even if you've been doing this a couple years a few years 10 years 20 years you're always learning and the learning thing here was like yeah like if i'm working for someone and what i'm currently writing isn't working and i've been working on it like three days for something that usually takes me a day and it's not working just chuck it in the bin mm -hmm. and so i did that and you can always take pieces back you know there's... oh that's the thing is like i like I like the concept and idea of the first story to where I right. probably will do something with that one day. I just don't think it'll work in a four page, even six page landscape. Um, it, it's something that's like half an issue, I think, to really flesh out. Yeah, it's um, so. That's something that's even even when you make something that's not uh going to be you know usable as instant monetary gain or or fulfillment gain there uh it always has something that's like a kernel even if it's just oh, a yeah. word well it was one of those things where like <clears throat> i figured he'd like this script that i sent in yesterday i figured he would um but i had in my mind like even if he rejects this one is like hey maybe do a different mm -hmm. approach or a different idea, I'd still be okay with it because, hey, I have this script I just did. If he doesn't accept it, I'll just use it for one of my comments. <laughs> yeah. Like, so mm -hmm. I, I went to, uh, uh, you know, I went to university for graphic design and one of my instructors was like, I don't know if it's bad, but I've made a lot of thumbnails and sometimes I thumbnail a lot of stuff for different logos. And, you know, sometimes one thumbnail for a different logo project can be better used as another thumbnail for another logo. <laughs> He's like, you know, I don't know how ethical that is, but that's what I do <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> hey, if you made it and like the, the, the person rejected it or they don't, own it or have the rights mm -hmm. to it like use it if it's not if it's not already out there like yeah like you you created it right that that's that was what i was thinking but there's something to him where he's like if it's a new project with a new idea for a new logo that has nothing to do with whatever logo he made before yeah yeah it's like he wants to have fresh ideas to kind of use for it it's like i don't know challenge thing or it's like a I, I it's like a to separate the branding thing i think that's what it is because i was literally thinking that with this project um i don't have any any scripts that entirely fit what this person is wanting for their anthology in terms of like scripts i've already written like shorts i've already written that fit distinctly with this genre and this vibe that they're going for but it made me think like, what if I got a, 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 a paying gig offer uh, to have an anthology script or this script or whatever for their comic um, would, and, and let's say I have, cause I have a bunch of scripts already written that I'll usually use for my own series in the future, but could always use it in other Repurpose. ways. Repurpose. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I was thinking like, would I, if someone hired me to just do a story to put in their anthology, would I just take one of the ones I already wrote and just give it to them and get paid that way? And I thought about it most likely no, because similar to what you were talking about with that guy, I I like writing. I like creating new mm -hmm. things. And it almost is kind of like a challenge thing, I think. Like like deep down, I think that's kind of what it is to where like, yeah, I wrote a six-page script instead of a four-page script. Like, 
me personally, like I'm glad I'm getting paid. I really just want to write and send this stuff. And that's why like I didn't ask for any extra with it being six pages instead of four pages is like one, we did originally settle on four pages, but I could have mentioned if I really wanted or cared about the money, like, Hey, maybe bump it up a little bit, but it's like, no, like, like I just like doing this stuff. Um, I'm not going to do it for free, but like at the end of the day, like I want to do this. this my passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is my passion. Um, and, and money falls right under that with it. Yeah. Like I want to create and then the money is right under. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, I totally, totally get behind that. That's, uh, I'm, that's awesome. Um, so do you, is there like a, an NDA on like what this project is or, um, uh, no any promotional I things going forward right now with it, or are we not, just going to be on the, yeah, he's a, he's a bunch of different indie writers and artists are, are coming together on this. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to, there's no NDAs or anything like that, but like, it is his project. I'll wait till mm-hmm. like he says something about it. And then I, with him saying something about it, I'll feel more okay saying stuff about it, but yeah. he's getting a bunch of hiring, a bunch of creatives to come together for this anthology. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Apparently my dog is as well. She's <laughs> going nuts about it. Well, we are looking forward to hearing more about that. It's really cool. You got, um, you you got poached i guess you could say for a a small story um well uh my cat is here um also very excited uh about brandon's project um (laughs) so uh but we'll go ahead and jump into uh this this kickstarter that surprisingly funded um i was very shocked i was telling uh brandon before we began that i thought that this was a big mistake that because <laughs> i i can't stress like this was at 40 to 50 percent most of the time uh of the kickstarter like once it hit 40 percent, it kind of uh was a slog to get to 50 percent, and i was like i can't imagine this being you know it's gonna be a slog to get to 100 percent. like and i've only got like a week left so um we were kind of like prepping i was like i was having like my list made up for for people to like reach out and 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 paypal link me and stuff like that uh just so that i could get it printed and uh there was only four hours left to go in the campaign and i had been working on one of my pages and i went back to the kickstarter and refreshed it (laughs) and it it went the the little green bar that had been halfway was maxed out (laughs) and it said i had seventeen hundred dollars and i was like no uh this that's not right i was like my immediate thought was that like Kickstarter had mixed up the data or like the code for my Kickstarter with another Kickstarter and just made it look like it had been fulfilled or something. Mm. I was like, no, this is, this isn't happening. So I (laughs) refreshed it like two or three times. And I was like, Oh my God, is that you go to like the the backer dashboard? Yes. I trying to scroll. I was like, this is actually showing up that I funded what happened, who did this. So I went to the, to the um, reports and I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I was thinking that it was somebody else that was like, like my coworker, Chris is like, he was like, let me know if it doesn't fund and i was like chris what do you say he was like just just let me know let's just let me know if it's, <laughs> it doesn't make it i was like chris you've already put a hundred dollars towards it you, you don't <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> don't do something crazy chris mm. and i was very afraid that he had done that 
<laughs> where he just finished out. Um, and I saw that it was uh, uh, one of our friends from the Deep South Paracomicon. Um, she is a friend that we made. She was a volunteer at that con, and she's also been a very big fan of the project. Um, and uh, I was just, I was astonished, and I was like, this isn't right. She, she There was a 800 put towards it, and I feel wrong, like, disclosing some <laughs> information, but she said it's okay, so I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, um, but, um, and I was like, this is a mistake. She couldn't have meant to put $800. So I was like, I text her, Mel, hey, thank you so much for donating. Did Are you add you an extra sure? zero? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> meant to put 800 Are you sure it wasn't like eight or 80 Because if you put 800 you might need to go ahead and like change that so you don't get this very large amount of money pulled from your account because <laughs> i was like we only have four four hours left in this campaign <laughs> and i don't want the kickstarter yeah, to yeah. just yoink eight hundred dollars out of your account yeah. <laughs> and she's like no no that's that's what i meant that's what i meant and i was like i love that oh, you did send the okay. message of like hey just making sure <laughs> like I did. Like, I just... It's about to end. Like th this will get taken out of your account. Like, or, right? Or, did you make a mistake? <laughs> I love that. That was the the message. I did. I thought it was like because she had sent a message like, "Oh, the campaign ends soon. I don't know how. I don't know what to. You know, I'll, I'll do what I can to support you. You know. Yeah. So it sounded like very much like it was just gonna be. You know. a $30 pledge or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, I was like, you did not sound like you meant to put $800. <laughs> and she was like, well, I just wanted, I wanted it to fund and I wanted it, you know, you make, uh, these, this project really beautifully. And I think, and I love your stuff. And, everybody needs a start somewhere and i was like i i appreciate it i appreciate it beyond belief like i i'm beside myself so we funded that's awesome <laughs> um that being said that that it's like it does count she's a fan she loves my work and everything but I feel like for most people doing a Kickstarter, when you're at 50% and you only have four hours left in your Kickstarter, I don't want you to be, I don't want people to be thinking that this is just going to happen. You that, know, it'll, um, yeah, yeah. Because, because we had talked about before we had recorded that, like, I've seen one to two examples on my four or five years doing Kickstarter one to two examples of this happening, not with me, just like of the hundreds mm -hmm. of Kickstarters I followed and, and looked at the creators and stuff like that. So for, for the listener, if you are getting into making a Kickstarter or whatever, don't bank on this happening. <laughs> it can happen, but don't bank on it happening. Um, but this is like, like, this is like, an amazing tell mm -hmm. for Austin to have, like for his <laughs> his his comic career going forward. This is a great tell for him to have. Yes, um, I I would say you know I have put in a lot of um, investment into going to the conventions over this year and uh, meeting people and getting everything out there um so that was a part of it had i not done that had i never met mel and in fact had i not ever met you know a lot of people brand i wouldn't have met brandon if i didn't yeah, know this convention. we actually met <laughs> yeah. so um i have uh done a lot to try and nurture this this business uh beforehand um so that came back and i guess you could say was uh, a blessing from from that uh, 
years worth of work um, because some of, some of those conventions barely broke even. There are several conventions that didn't break, that didn't even oh, get, yeah, yeah. you know. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> so, so um, it would, it it's like a middle ground of like, I, I don't feel that I have built up enough of an audience um, to properly fund a, a Kickstarter, but there's going to be some tips and stuff I'm going to go into uh, or my le my learning process of, of what happened in this Kickstarter. Um, but to have only been at 50% kind of told me a lot um, about how much of the audience I've built up. However, um, I will go ahead and segue into one of the points that I have. Um, and we discussed this last time is I would make my mark a little bit lower I would say, um, you know, next shot, I go at about a thousand or twelve hundred. That way, when people um, pledge that green bar looks like it's m growing more because it feels like people are not paying so much attention to the numbers as they are paying attention to um, the words funded or 90 yeah, percent yeah. or um, that kind of uh you know, psychological play on the, the Kickstarter, you know, marketing look, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah. So, um, I do plan on having a lower amount to go for. And just by doing that, I would have been at like 80% funded by the end of the Kickstarter. Um, and it would have been, you know, I don't think it would have been harder to get that 20 or 15 percent yeah, yeah. to go the rest of the way. I think it would have been much, much of a easier battle to do yeah, that. that am, psychological element of them seeing the green bar nearly there or it's saying mm -hmm. 80 percent funded or 90 percent funded. Like the people that you don't have a lot of people that are just like discovering on Kickstarter. You kind of mm -hmm. see those, some of those percentages within a Kickstarter when it's done. Um, but for the discoveries, like a lot of times people will, will, even if they know nothing about the comic or, or maybe not even care about the comic, they'll, they'll, they'll add to it because they see that it's so close. Right. They're like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that, that extra bump. Um, so I, yeah, it's like what you said and how we talked about, uh, two weeks ago, it is like a psychological thing of the closer that green bar is, or the closer it says 85, 90%, um, it, it gets people active in terms of mm -hmm. wanting to fund it. And then if it, if it is all the way green, or if it is a hundred percent or 110% or whatever, like people are even more inclined right to back it. the average for person. whatever reason <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um it's in, in like <clears throat> brandon just ended on that's exactly what the hope is is if you get funded then you have more discoverability and audience building through not only kickstarter but people just going to look at it being like oh wow it's 100 percent. i'm gonna get it you know um, because like we said, it's, it's treated more like a pre-order than it is a funding, um, yeah. thing. And, uh, for be people to be able to be like, I'm going to put my money down and it's going to for sure go to this thing. You know, it's, it's different than people being like, I'm going to put my money down, but I'm not, it doesn't, I don't know if it's going to like go through, maybe I won't put my money down. Cause you know, it, it's like it feels like they're gambling or something, I guess, but it, well, it's <laughs> the issue with it is, uh, uh, Kickstarter is one of the only crowd funders that will not charge people. If right. it doesn't fully reach its goal or get funded, Indiegogo, I'm pretty sure doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. I think once you put the money down, it's down and Indiegogo also, I think maybe you can set it, but a lot of them don't do this. And this isn't bashing Indiegogo. These are just a bunch of crowdfunders I've seen. Um, you basically, I don't think there's a, a deadline. I think it's just whatever the creator 
of the mm -hmm. Kickstarter or the Indiegogo whenever they want to like like call it sort of thing. But uh, like, yeah, for average, I think it's just they want to see it hit the goal. But uh, when someone puts their money down, <clears throat> I think it just charges them right then. I don't think it's it's oh if it doesn't reach the goal you don't get charged. So I'm not saying that's all of the reason why like some of these Kickstarter people that we're talking about, like they're like, uh, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know if I want to put it. Cause what if I, I doesn't fund or whatever. I think some of the other crowd funders may have like tainted that a little bit mm -hmm. with, with the prospect of like, Hey, it might not fund. <laughs> even if it doesn't fund you were still charged right um i it's been tempting to kind of try another place or to or i've considered another um kickstarter and i've seen like several people do multiple kickstarters for the same project yeah, yeah. um and they'll have different avenues of funding <clears throat> um but uh it was hard enough to run one kick <laughs> one campaign on one site i don't want to be the, the one that i want to try one day but i don't know if it's it is rising in prominence but i don't know if it's it's prominent enough for me to it's not really taking a gamble but it is kind of i want to try zoop eventually like zoop i i honestly like more than kickstarter because it's so user friendly mm -hmm. like it's like it's so simple how to use it um but it doesn't have the prominence of kickstarter so that's right. a big thing like kickstarter out of all of them has like the most prominence slash the most like security kind of yeah again i'm not bashing indiegogo or any of the other ones but with Indiegogo, like it feels like, I'm not saying a, a jankier version of Kickstarter. I'm not saying that, but the element of like, hey, I donated, and whether it funds or not, my money's still there. Mm -hmm. um, I think Kickstarter ensures better that like, hey, if you funded, you're getting your stuff. Uh, uh, if if you Sorry, I'm going to say if you donated, you're getting your stuff. Uh, if you donated and it doesn't fund, no skin off your back. You, you, don't, right. you don't even get charged. Right. Um, which is, you know, and you can pull that money at any time. If yeah, you, yeah. during the, while it's, you know, while the Kickstarter is going on, which again is my, why I was like, please, uh, <laughs> if this was a mistake fix it right now <laughs> um but to finish off on that point yes if it gets funded um it, it, that if that green bar fills up and you what you hope to happen is if you had an idea of like 1500 and you just set it at a thousand that it'll fund and people will just keep funding it to you'll likely get close to that 1500 if mm -hmm. not more because at the end of the day all i really needed to get it printed was a thousand what i right. wanted was 1600 so that other projects and other you know convention expenses and stuff like yeah, that yeah. could be pay, could be paid off um so it was like a bonus to have another four or five hundred dollars and also pay for shipping and for the little cut that um kickstarter takes yeah, uh, yeah. but in the grand scheme of things i would have been great with six hundred dollars five hundred dollars so if you if i would just you know go a little bit above what i need um but keep it at a at a fundable you know rate uh, it, it should work itself out and right. you know the idea is next time because it seemed like all things considered i did pretty good on a marketing push and interviews and reviews and stuff for doing all this stuff last minute <laughs> absolutely last minute 
it, it seemed like everything went as smooth as it could uh, on that end. Yeah. Except for the video. Um, I would say the, the next thing that I learned uh, was that doing a video for me, I don't know, doing this is easy. Doing Talking to people is easy. But like trying to feel like I'm scripted um, and then I'm in my cosplay and that's it's like a, a layering effect of like discomfort. Like I love being dressed up and stuff, but I also it's like a weight is added when I'm trying to like focus on something. Right. It's right. like um, and so the video felt like it came out very stammering and and my voice was kind of monotone and I didn't like that. And, and it just didn't seem like it was an appealing video. I did express all the points I wanted to express, but I feel like the video would be approached differently next time. Um, and I don't know how, but somehow I feel like next time it'll be different. Yeah. I'd say, uh, uh, look at various, uh, kickstarters look at their videos learn off of those um i learned off of a decent bit what i a major thing i learned is like you don't have to do too much with the video uh me personally i <laughs> i spend way too much time slash a little bit of too much money should then should probably be put in <laughs> one of those videos um, I think most people don't put money in those videos. Um, but uh, those videos for me specifically are just that. They are for me. Ultimately, they are great like trailers, great promotional pieces. Um, I, I do those videos because like like my trailers, like Galsman 1 trailer, Galsman 2 trailer, the Disney Comics or Disney Avenue trailer is like decent it's so so i think it fits more in line with like a typical uh kickstarter trailer i don't think it's bad i think it's a good kickstarter trailer but me as a creative it's like yeah it was, a, it was okay trailer. <laughs> um and then the tells from town city trailer those videos i really like because they're more than just like hey what's up it's brandon ingram and here's my <laughs> comic because I've done that. I did that with Disney. Mm -hmm. Um, those are like, they feel like, like goofy little trailers where I have, I hire a voice actor to do the 1940s radio announcer thing, like that sort of thing. And he, he does the, the stupid little ad <laughs> and, and it's funny. It's funny. I, I, cause I write it out. I add like jokes with yeah. it and stuff like that. Um, and then I usually hire an editor. This past time, uh, Manny from Nerdtastic News, he's taking a break from Nerdtastic News right now. But with Galsman 3, I'm going to try to go to him again because with Galsman 1 and 2, those trailers, I hired someone through Fiverr. They did a good job. It was a good job. Um, the second time, what I was paying for essentially a two-minute editing trailer where I, I just showed them like I sent images and clips mm -hmm. and I was just like compile this together to make it fit for what I was paying them um it was like no hopefully I can find another editor um, <laughs> and then tells from town city when that kickstarter happened I don't know how I reached out to Manny like with the editing thing maybe I saw some of his editing stuff before I was like, hey, could I like possibly hire you to edit this trailer with like all this stuff? And and here are, are the Galsman 1 trailer and the Galsman 2 trailer, like for reference, like essentially go for that sort of vibe. Like here's the audio clip. Here's this. If you could just kind of get those melding uh, together. He sends it to me and it's the trailer that you can see on the Kickstarter. I think it's better like editing yeah. than the Galsman one and two trailer. Um, he did a fantastic job. I want to get him to do the Galsman three trailer as well, the editing for that. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know where I was going with this. Essentially, <laughs> I, I 
those trailers, specifically the Gals Man and Tales from Town City ones, I love doing those trailers for me. Like usually on a Kickstarter, you can see how many people viewed it. I think with those trailers, it's like 100, 200 views sort of thing. So it's like mm-hmm. for for what I put into it in terms of like audience seeing it, it doesn't really, me putting that much effort into it doesn't like justify sort of. But what does justify for me is like I enjoyed the finished product mm-hmm. um, of this trailer as well as like I'm I'm – sorry to toot my own horn everyone like i like those trailers so much where i can use those i can add that to my resume essentially Mm -hmm. my creative resume for people who want to do trailers or or do this or do that and be like here's what i've done before like here you go marketing resume or whatever it may be um so even though i put way too much time and sometimes even money into those ultimately i don't think it is one of those things where i did put too much time or i did put too much money because i think in the end it's going to justify itself so right it's justified itself to me at least because i enjoy those things (laughs) um well I remember your Tales from Town City one. It's the only one I've, I think I've seen, and I loved it. But I don't know any of the other ones that you made. So yeah, essentially, uh, I would offer the, a little bit more. In no, the, you're good. the The Gallows Man number one trailer essentially is what started it all. Um, there's a little thing at the end of that one, the Gallows Man two trailer, and the one you saw, Tales from Town City trailer. There's a thing at the end of that because usually. It's like two minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds sort of thing. The first minute and 20 seconds are the ad, the trailer, essentially. Like, here's the Kickstarter with some jokes here and there. And then at like the minute 20 mark, there's like a few second pause. And then it's it's the the voiceover guy, essentially like like doing his own thing like the the gals man <laughs> one trailer it was the ad then he's like you can he, it, it's written better i can't remember what mm-hmm. it is but it's like you can click off this video now <laughs> what you're waiting there's for? nothing further <laughs> you, well, yeah what are you waiting for <laughs> and then like like after five or ten seconds has, has passed he starts saying just stupid stuff that me and Tio wrote because i got with tio for some of these last bits i was like what is just some like i told tio i was like what are some stupid stuff that you would just love to hear a 1940s radio (laughs) announcer say (laughs) like something you've never pictured them saying you just want to hear them say it and so that's what kind of started that and that's with galsman one galsman two tells from town city like we i've done that with all of those trailers um and the first one has the most of the stupid stuff that he says at the end. It's like, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I had a wild DMT trip in the <laughs> deserts of Nevada. And then like, uh, like me, mow, moo, mow. <laughs> like it's, it's the dumbest stuff ever, but it's so funny to hear this guy say it. Um, and, that and is, also, that like, is good. also with this voice actor, it's not like, like I'm, like picking on him by saying these things before he did the voice acting stuff. I was like, Hey, are you okay with like saying this stuff? Kind of the, the meta element of it. Cause tells from town city has that where he's, it shows him. He should have been not like, him. What is the script? <laughs> no, no, that that's that. I started doing that with the second one. Oh no. The second trailer. I started doing that, adding that meta element where like it's at the end and he's like, an issue two can't even can't even believe the first issue got successful it was like if only i could do voice acting work that i truly crave that i truly live for and say things like <laughs> and, and then get him to yeah. say all the stupid stuff and then at the end he's like only then would i truly reach nirvana <laughs> it's, a, it's just someone like looking at a sunset it's, it's so it's stupid. probably then, it's probably a shame of how many people don't get to hear that 
<laughs> I, I know it sounds it sounds like like very braggadocious kind of, but I want people to just go watch those trailers. You can find it on Kickstarter, like I've been Gals Man One Kickstarter. The trailer's still there. Same thing with Gals Man Two trailer. Same thing with Tells from Town City. Um, I honestly recommend watching them back to back because you see the the progression of it kind of. Um, yeah, I, I I personally really like those trailers. Uh, that I'm biased. I wrote them, <laughs> but uh, well, but no, Mister uh, Corley, I think, is the guy on Fiverr. And I still use that voice actor to this day. Like he's incredible. Steady paycheck from Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Brandon, I'm going to pause for just a minute and I'll be right back. And we are continuing. Um, let me think. So went over the uh, miracle that happened. The... Uh, the funding bar in the psychological play on all that, the video. Um, I think really only thing that I would uh, go over more is maybe the audience building um, and maybe the time of year. So I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback that the, uh, the market or a lot of them, a lot of Kickstarters right now are not doing as well as they could or that they normally do, or that some, you know, some of those starting out are having a hard time, um, possibly for this season, um, maybe just this year in general, bad economy, that kind of thing. Um, so people are a little bit more reserved on how they spend money. Um, and I also heard that uh, doing it in the summer isn't could be a little bit of a downfall as opposed to doing it like in the winter months or in the the indoors feeling uh, comfortable months, <laughs> I guess you could say. I, I've heard that from from some people and like based on like what I've seen with Kickstarters, um, I've never done one in the summer. It wasn't entirely like for uh, 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 marketing reason why I didn't. It's just, it just never wound up like that. But from what I've seen, they usually don't, it's like what you said, There, there's like not as big of a, a draw or audience during the summer, which mm -hmm. speculation I'm assuming is like, like what you said, like everyone's out and about, uh, you're, you're paying for vacations, you're, you're, paying for all the summer activities. You have a ton of summer blockbusters that usually come out. People are paying to go see those. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is a big factor into that. I'm not sure. I think, um, you know, out, there's convention season going on too. And mm -hmm. uh, when I did the first um, appearance with, with Katie, Heroes Con was going on and it seemed mm -hmm. like it had, she to her it seemed like a little bit of a downturn in the audience she's like oh we got so and so and so and so and so and so at, at heroes con and you know we got probably about 100 people at uh, the normal audience at, at, at uh, heroes con and i was like oh okay um so we did the second appearance right before the end of the kickstarter and yeah, there were a lot more people present. Like there was way more activity. It seemed like going on during that stream, uh, as opposed to the one a few weeks prior. And uh, in any time before that, the interviews were there were some that were around um, uh, the Fourth of July, and there was one on the Fourth of July. I had that Swag King interview. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, mass, I think it's actually Master Swag King. It's a very funny name, but um, he he had reached out to me and we'd set it up and set it up on the 4th. I didn't have anything going on on 4th of July, so I was like, why not? Yeah. So, um, so part of the season or part of the, oh, excuse me, 
the Kickstarter going on at that time uh, was during an outdoorsy holiday. So yeah, yeah. Um, my difference in doing that is I might also do try to have them done in the winter months. Um, mm. And if I need something printed during the summer, just buckle down and and do it myself. Uh, but um, issue three, we have half of a year left. So I believe issue three would be done around um, January. Uh, and I would try to, I guess, get that pushed in um, in March or so, so something like that, uh, just before the really outdoorsy seasons hit. Uh, but yeah, um, that might have played a part. Um, I don't know how significant that that is, but that's what I was told as far as something tips go. Possible tip, at least this is just my experience. It, it, I think it is definitely different per creator and is also different um, for bigger creators. I'm sure <clears throat> this is actually helpful for them. Uh, it slightly plays into what we're talking about here. With Tales from Town City last year, when I did the Kickstarter for it, I had two, maybe three conventions uh, around the time of the Kickstarter slash during the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter did very well, but looking over it, I, cause originally I, I had done like some promotion stuff to like, essentially at the convention, like it, it it's going to be helpful. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to get new backers through the convention sort of thing. Um, what I realized was like, I don't think I got any new backers or any backers through conventions. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the conventions were good time. Um, one of them that was during the, the, the Kickstarter, uh, it was a three day one that was during the Kickstarter. It was one of those conventions where I didn't break even. Um, and also I didn't get backers from the convention for the Kickstarter. And I was kind of like, crap, like, yes, this was a great convention experience. Like, like I didn't break even, but I had a good time, good time with Tio, good time meeting new people sort of thing. But at the end of the day, I, I factored it up. I was like, man, those three days, especially it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, those are weekend days. Those three days, I could have been on three different, at least three different shows at that time, or yeah. three other avenues of of promoting this Kickstarter, where I would have guaranteed at least a backer per one sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was happy to do the convention. It was my first time doing that convention, but it's one of those things where I learned because before that, I had a great time at, at Deep South Para Comic Con uh, that previous month like leading up to the Kickstarter and I had some promotional stuff for people to like get notified for the Kickstarter. Cause it'll go live in two weeks sort of thing. Maybe one person like, mm -hmm. like, like scanned it and notified and all that stuff. Um, this isn't bashing any conventions. What it made me learn for me personally is I don't think I'll run a Kickstarter during a convention window but mm -hmm. i'm not going to run a kickstarter when i've got a convention going um and, and vice versa i'm not going to do a convention in the month that i've got a kickstarter going sort of thing because during because most conventions are two days sometimes three days and it's always weekends and those can be crucial times in the marketing because there's some mm -hmm. shows that only do weekend shows like in terms of youtube or podcast or whatever it may be um and it could be some of the bigger shows did like you sell any weekends. comics i i sold i sold comics none that i was doing the kickstarter for so comics comics did sell at the conventions and stuff that that's what i'm saying is like the 
the conventions went great in terms of helping spread the word, spread the name. But for the Kickstarter right then, it wasn't beneficial. Well, I'm thinking that um, po- if if you had enough time to plan, you could have a bookmark or a business card that has the Kickstarter QR code on it, maybe. Yeah, and like yeah. just the low, just a, just a card that strictly was for that that Kickstarter or something. Yeah, you throw true. it in a comic like bag and board or something yeah yeah. Um, maybe that would work better in the future if you are just kind of caught with a convention during a kickstarter yeah Um, that's true i did have some people that wanted to do the kickstarter then and there i did get one person that got the um the uh, variant cover um okay yeah but she was she was friends with one of my friends that was working another booth over there, um, so that might have had something to do with it. But um, she did back uh, one of the bigger uh, pledges. So, um, and then I had several people that were like, kind of more interested in it being right then and there like started because yeah yeah um it had not started until the day after that convention um it, mm. the, you know after WeevilCon is, was day one so i was kind of like there's a kickstarter going on soon like in mm. a few days and it's like again that instant like gratification thing kind of kicks in where it's like people just forget or you know don't want to bother with thinking about it in a few days um so i feel like maybe if i had launched on the convention day it would have been like kickstarter's going on right now go yeah, I, yeah. I had a little banner that had like the qr code and the 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 uh url and stuff and i was trying to like be like this is what if you don't want to get anything or if you're interested, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, whatever you're interested in here, it would help a lot if you go here. And I was like really pointing to that, that banner. Um, and I wish I did kind of like a thing that I told you where I had a card ready that yeah, just yeah. went with everything that I sold. Every little thing that I sold had a QR um, Kickstarter card or something. Yeah, which I'm going to keep my URL that I have uh, for MB Comic. Um, And I can always make that a redirect to the new Kickstarter. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, So. Yeah, that that way you don't have to get new codes and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would make having a a card a little bit easier. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I also think that maybe doing it during having a con go on while you're at a uh doing a kickstarter would be um could be detrimental so i had kind of a plan an idea where there were a lot of people that i know personally offering cash to go towards the kickstarter and i was like hey you gotta go sign up and you gotta go do this and like there were some people that i turned down that i could have had like an extra 40 or 60 dollars <clears throat> and eventually I just did start taking cash because I was like, well, you know, I do need money to print. I can still put this in my bank account. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking that I could um, somehow have that money put towards the Kickstarter. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, even with it. So uh, it also makes me wonder that if you did have a good convention where you, you know, went be, you know, made profit if you somehow would be able to transfer that profit into the Kickstarter as well, because to me, that's technically like people are trying to support you yeah, and yeah. they like the work and technically that money's for the business. It can go to a Kickstarter. I mean, t- to me, that's, yeah, know, I, I could see that. Cause I've, I've got, uh, I've got the Disney comics Kickstarter account. Then I've got just a, uh, regular, like Kickstarter account, like through a different email. Um, the reason I have those is because I had that regular one before Disney Comics. Um, but yeah, like I could see you get that that cash money or whatever it is, and then 
like put in your bank account, then use the separate account to then mm-hmm. back the project. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be bad. That that would be good for seeing the bar increase. Right. The the one thing with that is, uh, uh, I guess it's that. Eh. Yeah, honestly, yeah, it works out because I was just thinking like, yeah, but you'll you'll send the money and Kickstarter will will take that ten percent. But then I was like, well, if they backed it, it would take the ten percent anyway. So scrap <laughs> what I was just thinking. What you said, I think, is a good idea. Is it ten percent? Is it five percent? Maybe it's five percent. I can't remember. It feels like it's ten percent. <laughs> they take too much. It might be ten percent. I saw something that said five percent, and but next to it somewhere oh, was it's, shipping. It's so. five. It's it's Kickstarter's five percent. Then there's like a three to five percent like convenience fee type thing. I don't know if it is convenience <laughs> fee or it's it's something. Mm-hmm. You have the the Kickstarter percentage, then you have some other percentage added on. Okay. All right. Well, let's see here. I'm we're going to close out here soon. Um, I want to add this to the screen. So I will be on with Scott Vaughn uh, on Comic Book Addicts and it'll be 730 his time. I believe that's 630 my time. I think <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be recorded either way so make it to the live or or watch it later um but this was just one of those interviews we couldn't fit in but i'm more than happy to do and and uh talk about uh you know a lot of the stuff that i go through uh with uh making a comic and and the story and all that stuff um, and sometimes different people ask different questions. And so I'm always yeah. eager to be on uh, a different platform um, or a different host. Uh, so the uh, little ad is up right now on the screen. So if you are listening, you can uh, at a convenient time, go back and look at uh, the little the thumbnail, uh, see what you're looking out for when you when you look for the uh the live or the event um and that is again on monday july 22nd at 7 30. so go check that out nice. all right stream yards awesome I, I gotta say yeah uh, yeah very user friendly and stuff yeah I've, I've barely used any of the features with to i think i've <laughs> put in a, a clip at the beginning that's about all well, uh, if only I knew how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, is there anything else that you, you want to go over or discuss? Um, there's one thing that has nothing to do with comics. It's, I'll awesome. briefly mention it. It's more <laughs> uh, stuff I saw slash recommendations. It's not going to be long. I'll, I'll be very brief. No, about no. This. You take all there the time you need. three horror movies that have come out the past month basically like your your summer blockbuster horror movie type stuff um you have maxine you have uh uh, the quiet place day one and you have long legs um i've seen all three best one to me was maxine i thought it was out of those three of those three i think maxine okay was the best i'm not saying it's pretty good i'm not saying it's great it was good I have also movie. watched Maxine. Yeah. But I have not watched have the you other seen, two. Okay, I was about to say, uh, compared to X and Pearl, I think it's better than X. I personally think X is like, it's okay. It's, oh, it's, of the trilogy, I've watched all the Of trilogy. the trilogy. Oh, oh, yeah. you've seen all the trilogy. Okay, yeah. Pearl's um, my favorite. I think Pearl yes, is a Pearl's really good movie. My favorite. I, I really like Pearl. X is okay to find. And Maxine, I, I thought was... It was good. Time. Nothing yeah. great. It was, it was good. That's pretty much how I see it. I thought Pearl was like really, uh, really, really fun to watch. There was a lot of, um, I don't know. There was a lot more uh, depth to Pearl that mm-hmm. you know she really 
acted her heart out. Um, and I think she did, a, Mia did a wonderful job acting in all of them, but I think her acting just shined in, in Pearl. And then in, in uh, movies, I think Pearl, like not just her acting, that's a major thing, but just in terms of each movie, it's a standout to me. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's, I'm not saying it's this good, but it's the dark night of the trilogy, essentially. <laughs> How the dark yeah. night stands out compared to Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rises. Pearl does that for me compared to right. X and Maxine. Um, and, and I would agree with the, the other ones, how they fell into, I think, um, X was, I think X was a lot better than Maxine personally. Um, and then I thought Maxine was, was good. Yeah. Um, I think we can go more into, uh, a review later, but you know, if we, if we build up a, a library of things we want to review, we might, we might be looking at um some exclusives <laughs> for yeah, yeah. for me and brandon um but yeah so so maxine i think it's good worth seeing not amazing nothing entirely groundbreaking but good good horror movie quiet place day one it's fine to good like like i'd say it's 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 worth watching it's it's worth watching <laughs> If you like the Quiet well, Place movies, you'll like yeah. this sort of thing. Like uh, my thing with the Quiet Place is uh, the the monster is kind of like I really enjoy that it's like a a hearing based monster that like, that's mm. really cool, but it feels like it's just uh, uh, Stranger Things two point oh Demog Demogorgon kind of thing. Yeah, I kind of see that. Yeah. Um, I just feel like some monsters are getting a little too uh, similar in different properties. Um, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. And, yeah, and I just kind of want uh, a little bit more the variation. Like the the Cloverfield monster, I think is also fits into that category, but it yeah. had those little tiny things fall off of it. The little tiny creatures crawling around in the and also, I'll say with the Cloverfield monster, it did it before these movies. So these mm -hmm. movies are kind of just seeing the Cloverfield monster design and just kind of taking it and doing it. Because because I'll say, like, yeah, in terms of design, like the Cloverfield monster, aside from the face, just looks like a giant version of the A Quiet Place monster. It does, monster. yeah. And, and like you said, it was kind of before these other properties started implementing their monsters so um it that that creature was was very interesting and and in the found footage kind of sense i liked it um i like that with found footage especially um but with good but if you if you don't use found footage format but you use good lighting and good um obscurity you can hide a lot of issues with CGI. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that it it really gave a sense of uh, fear and danger in, in that movie. And uh, like I said, I think those little creatures that were in the subway system uh, in, in Cloverfield were just awesome. Like uh, I was, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a very horrifying feeling. Uh, it was very uncomfortable uh, in that moment. Yeah. So, uh, and then on top of that, it's like laying eggs or blowing people up or something yeah, for bites. Yeah. So you don't really understand how that's working. There's yeah. a lot of mystery and stuff going on. Um, and uh, I, I like when a monster isn't just so straightforward, destructive. I, I want it to have some kind of uh, yeah, breeding or, or, psychic or something that's you know these these features to it that are making it more dangerous outside of it just grabbing you you know right, uh, right. very cool stuff um so with the quiet place i kind of feel um like the danger is just so straightforward like you they've done a wonderful job like i think they the movies are are really good um 
but I feel more like an action suspense kind of thing going on rather than like a fear based thing. Uh, and, and I, I definitely say like it starts going more and more with that, with the second one, especially this new one, this new one is just like, like it's not really horror. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the first one to me did feel, I mean, there was no time I was really like scared, but it, it felt more horror, um, because you rarely saw any of these monsters. Like the first time you see it is like that intense scene where they're on the train tracks and then the little kid's toy goes off and they're all like, Oh crap. And like, they're trying mm -hmm. to run to get the kid. And then you barely see the monster yeah. it sweeps the kid away. It's yeah. gone. It's like, like that, like of, of anything of that movie, that's the scene that like will always stick out mm -hmm. with me. Very, very well done. And the rest of the movie is, is pretty good as well. Um, in that horror department it does lean more into like the action horror towards the very end um but that first one does feel more horror second one starts getting into the action horror territory this one day one it's not scary at all it literally is just just uh action suspense sort of thing it's worth watching it's it's a it's a pretty decent movie and i i like kind of the scenery change and, and different mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's New York. And also this is the first time you're seeing this many of the aliens. Like most of the time it's like a couple or a few sort of thing. This is like tens, if not hundreds that you're seeing sort of thing. Um, I'm not saying that makes it better. It just makes it different than the other two. Mm -hmm. And then the main character has cancer and her whole go goal is to go to this part of New York that she used to go to when she was a kid to get a slice of pizza mm -hmm. amidst all of this. Um, so I like that plot, at least, where it's like, I, I'm i going to die anyway. <laughs> I want to go get a slice of pizza. <laughs> Whether the monsters kill me or not, I'm going to die. <laughs> so I'm going to go get a slice of pizza everyone's running this way i'm going this way very based um, yes, yes. <laughs> um tonight we're going to go watch long legs so okay i won't um, say anything about it then. all right uh which you know i need to like tamp down like i really don't want my hype to be up because the one thing i will <laughs> say bring the hype down yeah, I will say I do think it's been. I'm not saying it's a bad movie at all. I think how some of the critic marketing has been, mm -hmm. it's overhyped the movie. So if you're able to bring your hype down, I think it's going to help a lot. Which, you know, kind of sucks. I'm really looking forward to like a really, really, really like new um, hereditary kind of horror <laughs> some me point. personally it's not equal to hereditary right but if you can bring the hype down i think it'll be better yeah 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 <laughs> all right brandon well i appreciate uh uh that and we'll be looking forward to to that next uh episode um and with that i'm austin light uh with american deep in comics and you can find more over at AmericanDemonComics.com. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at American Demon Comics uh, and TikTok at American Demon Comics. So, uh, Brandon, where can we find you, can you? Find all my stuff, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Disney Comics. It's been like uh, over a month since I've posted. Maybe I'll finally post this week, like a little teaser image of a panel from gallows man three or something um but i've just been busy with the summer events as well as the the different all this writing i'm doing and you can't really like I, i've done yeah. it in the past but you can't really like like post like oh it, it's not like art it's not like mm -hmm. here's what i got going on i can't just like post words as an image 
and, and even that doesn't bring in as much as you you hope yeah, yeah. when you when you put up art or something um yeah, and true. it's still kind of it's still uh difficult to think of like what should i show what should i shouldn't yeah. show and and um and sometimes you want to leave an aura of mystery going on oh yeah <laughs> but it's it's busy it's been a busy season for uh us creators and sometimes it's not easy to post all the time so uh we forgive you brandon um, thanks yeah it's, it's <laughs> for me it's tough posting a screen grab of a script uh <laughs> Because it's like, uh, like, I guess the the best I could do with that is like a line from the script that like, you could just pull and mm -hmm. it's not pertaining to anything. It's just a funny line or something. Maybe I can do that, but that's that's the extent of it. I might post an image from Gal's Man Three or something. We'll see. Well, thank you for joining me, Brandon, and we will catch all of you in a few weeks. Take care. <laughs>